Adam. You're live. Oh, thank you. Yay. We were having a little technical difficulty, say? so welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Eka Capiotis here on behalf of the Front Royal Women's Resource Center, and I'm very happy to have as our guest tonight Miranda Hope, who is a yoga instructor at our local jail, and uh, among many other talents that she has, she just is actually putting a CD together. She's also a singer and performer and um, artist, and I could go on, but we'll we'll stop for now and we'll focus on the yoga. So Thank welcome, you, Miranda. Thank We've been you. having a really nice discussion um, for the last while mm -hmm. about, you know, your surprises that you found going into, um, into the jail and the insights that you've had and what it feels like to go, go there, but welcome. Thank you. I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I just want to repeat a few things because um, as a society, maybe we don't think about the incarcerated very much. Um, maybe we don't know that we have 2.3 million people incarcerated in this country and that 250,000 of them are veterans and that many of them have suffered early childhood adverse events and that has led to trauma and that frequently leads to addiction and that the disproportionate, disproportionately people of color are incarcerated. And so it's, a, it's just a complicated picture. I don't want to simplify it too much, but I do want to perhaps point to an issue that perhaps we have put our traumatized and therefore addicted people in cages. And when you put people in cages, there's such a tremendous psychic pressure to being not only banished, in exile. I mean, if we think about it in those ancient Roman terms of what's the worst thing you can do to a person is put them in exile. We put them in exile, we put them in cages, and as one of my, I'll read from a letter later, the inmate says, I live in a bathroom with another man. Mm. That is, his, that is his state of existence, and he calls it cruel. And um, I also want to say that the RSW jail, the Rappahannock Shenandoah Warren County Jail, where I teach, it is immaculate. It is safe. I have seen no evidence of drugs. I had a, an inmate in my class who was um, homosexual, he had no problems. He said, everybody's been really nice in this jail. Everybody's really smart. They seem to know a lot about art and literature, actually. <laughs> and um, he said, no, everybody's really, really been kind. Uh, Superintendent Gilkison is an excellent human being. I'm a giant fan. And I have nothing negative to say about that actual facility. But in terms of what are we doing as a society, this issue of punishment, we know that with children, um, punishment, punishment is a whole study. Spanking doesn't work. Spanking leads to more violence. Timeouts don't work. Time-ins work. Get in there. Teach. Provide other options. Reflect. Emotional intelligence. These things work. But if timeouts don't work for kids, um, you know, what, are we, what are we doing? So this is just a picture of some of my students and in the jail. It's a beautiful room. The jail provides me with uh, mats and blocks and mat cleaner and a cart and correctional officers to shuttle my students around. And I, I really couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity. Uh, and Can I walk that around? Yeah, sure. I just people? I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of like this one. So it just gives you a sense. So what is my my goal right now is to show you how beautiful they are. Because they are so scared that when they get out, no one will give them a job. No one will give them a place to live. No one will give them job training. No one will give them um, a break. And then they need they need support. They need counseling. They need um, addiction support and counseling. Um, one thing that was surprising to me was that they um, 
some of them like to have probation officers. They want their urine to be tested because they don't think they can do it on their own. They don't, they can't, they need that structure and they don't feel like they can provide it for themselves. And they're terrified that they're just gonna go back to their old friends or go back to their families or go back to their old ways. And so they, when I asked one, I said, is there anything you want me to tell this gathering? And she said, please tell our community that we need, we need, we need help. We need their help. It's a bit of a call to action for all of us. Um, but in terms of other, I'm just gonna, um, surprising things. One thing that I mentioned before we went online is that at first I was terrified and I saw these orange stripes and I just thought I had a kind of an animal sympathetic reaction of fight or flight. I just thought <laughs> there's no way that I can be in a calm state and calm these people down if I am in this panic. But then two, three seconds into the first class and I realized that I have, they, mean, they mean no harm. They, they, at least everybody in my class, and I am with uh, mostly nonviolent offenders, but um, they really are just looking to feel whole. And so the word yoga, which comes from the root word yolk, like uh, not like an egg yolk, but like um, the yolk between two oxen, mm -hmm. and it is the um, the thing that connects the masculine and feminine the spirit and the body, um, this mind and spirit, the, this connecting force, this union, union, yoga is union. And um, so Miranda, did you just walk it. into the jail and start telling them this? Or how did you connect <laughs> with them to begin with? Um, yeah, because yoga sort of needs, needs to be sold. We think of yoga as um, this thing that uh, rich white women do in tight pants and um, you know just bending themselves into pretzels for an unknown reason um, but I did work for five years in the lockdown psych ward of the VA hospital and uh, taught a weekly class there um, and working with them with PTSD and traumatic brain injury and amputations depression anxiety insomnia all those things and so I had to figure out a way to get them on board. Now these are veterans, so they're probably even more unlikely to buy into yoga than the incarcerated. Um, so what I would tell them was, in the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of God, the core text of yoga, there is a hero, and his name is Arjuna, and he's the finest warrior of his time. And on the day of the great battle, he walked out onto the field and he surveyed the enemy. He wanted to size up the enemy before the fight. And he looked out across and he had his chariot and he had his sword. And he looked out across and the sun was rising. And he saw that the enemy was his family, his teachers, his community. And he realized he was fighting a civil war. And he dropped his weapon in despair and said, I cannot fight. And in that moment, he realized that the battlefield was this big. And then I would say, let's begin. <laughs> let's put our feet on the floor. And I 100% buy it. Just 100%, they're like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that was working for me in um, a military population is that they believe in the chain of command. Um, and it's kind of similar, because in, in one column you have mostly men, mostly Republican, mostly of color, mostly lower income, and believing in a chain of command. And then in the yoga column, you have mostly women, mostly liberal Democrats, mostly <laughs> upper middle class, um, who believe in an inner guide. And so how do we make this bridge? Because as I was told when I was in training with an organization called Warriors at Ease, uh, if you can package this properly, you're likely to see things that look like enlightenment within a half an hour. That means leaving your Sanskrit at the door. <laughs> that means leaving your all your woo-woo, your, your stuff at the door.
Don't bring in Middle Eastern symbols. Don't bring in your, your incense. They might have negative associations with the Middle East. Um, don't bring in your guided meditations about sand. They might have negative associations with sand. Just get down to the bare bones of it and let them teach you what yoga is. And sure enough, then after 45 minutes in that setting, I did see people say, I'm in here for chronic pain and I'm pain free right now. Or I haven't been able to smell for nine years and I can smell right now. Or I have, I'm in here because I can't sleep and I fell asleep in your class. Mm -hmm. Or my one that taught me so much was, he said, I almost cried, but I didn't. And I said, Oh, well, in yoga, we believe that tears are pain leaving the body. So he said, no, 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 no. I'm in here because I can't stop crying. Mm -hmm. And I almost cried, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And to me that, again, like, so they're teaching me what I'm doing there. And it's this, it's a balancing. It's a, it's a balancing of the nervous system. People who need to cry might cry in a yoga class. People that need to stop crying might stop crying in a yoga class. So, um... The minute that I say something like the battlefield is this big, those, those incarcerated people know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And the minute that I say, you know, I, I, really, I really think that in, in an hour, my goal is that for you to feel something whole, you can feel that your whole part of you is unbroken. Um, and let's just, let's just see if it goes. And oh, and to them I say, the whole class is optional. You don't have to do one thing I say. I feel like enough options have been taken from you. So if you want to sleep on your mat for the whole class, I will be silently cheering for you that you are following what you, what you need to do for this hour. Because I can't feel good about, about myself to come in here and boss you around. And they love that. I bet. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> they love that. Yes. Um, so when you walk into the class, yeah. um, how do you start the class with them? Well, I, um, I, have, my, I have 11 mats, and I, I try to get them perfect. I don't think they ever notice, but I really try to get a perfect circle with the blocks put perfectly and the handouts perfect. Because I just think it shows caring. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's all we're doing. I guess in counseling, they've, they've, they've looked at all the different forms of counseling and tried to find out which one is the most effective. And they discovered that the only thing that really matters is if the therapist cares, or if the client believes that the ther therapist cares about them. Mm -hmm. And so I don't actually know if any of my students in the psych ward or in the jail care about yoga at all. But they are receiving this this message of this weird, crazy, eager woman who comes in almost breathless to be like, let's feel good. Like, let's, let's get that blissful feeling going, you know? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so that's part of it. I just set that up. And then they come in. I shake their hands. I look them in the eye. I think it's so important. I learn their names. I tell them welcome, which is so weird. Because what we're really talking about is the jail within the jail within the jail. You know, the rec room inside of the jail, the heads inside of the rec room inside of the jail. They come in and I just say, welcome. <laughs> welcome, glad you're here. Yeah. Um, and, and they probably I, don't hear that from anybody else. No, I definitely think that the, the effectiveness of my class benefits from the, the, the difficult circumstances that they're in. Mm -hmm. You know, that in some cases they don't feel that they're treated very well. Yeah. So, um, and then we just begin, we sit, and oddly, the men, the men's class goes deeper than the women's class. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that. And at first they said, we couldn't believe that people were taking yoga seriously. People take this class more seriously than they take any other class in the jail. That. Um, which is no offense to any of the people teaching the other classes, because um, those are really good people. But there is something about this yoga that they need. And they come in and they, they couldn't be more respectful. I've had zero issues 
They couldn't, they are so grateful. They do all of it. <laughs> I can't even believe it sometimes. I'm like, all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then we just, we go through and um, I wanted to, um, I, there's this one guy, uh, I'll call him Matt, and he was kind of scary looking, you know, that he had the gang tattoos and this chiseled face. And um, he, from the beginning of the class to the end, he was the most transformed. He came in angry and he left, I blissed out. And then he had to go to Max for fighting, or the shoe, he had to go to solitary. And then he had to go to Max. And so I didn't see him again. He can't, if you're in Max, you can't take classes. But in Max, you have to wear the black and white stripes. And so I did see him coming towards me in the hall one day, his hands behind his back, led by a huge correctional officer, and his chiseled face just looking so angry. And um, he's walking, he's walking. And I look, and I'm like, Matt? And he just melted. And he's like, oh, hey, Mandy. He's got his hand. I'm really trying to get back to yoga class. Please don't take me off the list. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the correctional officer. He's just like got him on, like, by his, by, you know, by his handcuffed hands behind. He's like, yoga. <laughs> and Matt's like, I'm like, Matt, I'm so sorry, but I had to take you off the list. But I promise you are on the wait list. And the minute you get out of, you get out of Max, you, um, we'll get you back in yoga class. He's like, thanks so much. How are you doing? How are you? I'm like, I'm good. You know, I'm just we're like this close to each other. And um, I just think um, no assumptions, no judgments, no... Um, if I'd seen that guy in an alleyway walking down the street, I would have been so terrified. And here he is, like one of my best yoga students, and I miss him. And he's still in Max, and I can't, I can't get him. I can't get him back. And it's been a source of um, I don't know, just kind of an ache for me. Another surprise was that I went in scared of them, and then they get out, and then I kind of I, I look around like the front row of Fourth of July parade. I'm like. Jeff, Samantha, where are you guys? <laughs> I miss them and I can't find them and I um, I, I kind of stalk them on Facebook. To be honest with you. <laughs> 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 uh, so now I'm the stalker. Like I'm. Mm. The uh, <laughs> and then at the end, yeah. you were talking about um, at the end of the. How do you end the session? The session, well, it's one of my, I can't even tell you how lucky I am, and I would wish this opportunity on every single one of you, on every, for everyone in the world, if I could, if I could wave a wand. Because now my men's class is mostly African American men, and so I drop them into a deep relaxation, and I realize that that deep relaxation is very vulnerable, and it's a little embarrassing because you're kind of tensing and releasing different muscles. So I told them, I'm just, I'm not gonna look. I'm actually gonna lie down as well. So all I can see are the fluorescent lights, and they roll up their uniform shirts and place them over their eyes. So they can't, so none of us can see. We're all kind of blind. And then Mandy is telling is going through the script of a deep relaxation. But I'm going through it as well. Normally in a yoga class, I wouldn't, I would sit there. But because I don't want them to feel vulnerable or embarrassed, I actually want them to do it. I tell, you know, I go through it, why not? And so I've got, I'll call him Fred on this side and Mark on this side. In your perfect circle. In our perfect circle. Mm -hmm. And we're just lying there on the floor and we're going into this very deep, relaxed state, as deep as, and relaxed as possible. It's deeper than sleep. And I can just hear Fred and Mark exhaling with me. <sighs> That's all I can hear, but we're just doing this together. These um, African-American men and me. And then I'm whispering, I get them, really relaxed and then I have the great privilege to whisper that they are whole that they are not what has happened to them that there is so much good inside of them that they are not their worst day 
that there is a part of them that is completely untouched by anything that's ever happened to them. And they can sense that. And I can sense it too. And that to just be 37.2 trillion cells that have somehow agreed to be you, just held together by electricity and created, I mean, there's no denying it. It's, we're made of stardust. We were at the Big Bang. We were there. What else could we be made of? And that we're just this miraculous, breathing, astonishingly well-designed collection of stardust and electricity. Exhaling together on the floor of the jail, within the jail. <laughs> and for those moments, I, I believe it, and they believe it. And when we, when we gently come out of that, I mean, just to treat people so gently, and everything's an invitation in a trauma-sensitive yoga class. Pretty much, they don't have to pick up their arm. I invite them to pick up their arm. If it feels right, they can move their leg. Because they didn't have any say when they were traumatized. They didn't have any agency. And so now, 500 times in an hour, they're gonna decide, okay, yeah, I do wanna lift my arm. I do wanna move my leg. <coughs> and so they take their agency back. Also in trauma, we dissociate, we leave the body. It's, the body. it's a beautiful system for staying alive. We, the body's not safe, so we live in the head. And then we realize the head's not safe, so we live in some weird place above the head. And so yoga embodies a person again relaxes them and teaches the nervous system that it can be safe living in the body. The identity can come back to the body. So it's perfectly poised for trauma. And um, I really, I can't say enough about how fortunate I feel to be in that position. And I know it's, it's kind of corny. Oh, I get more out of it than I give. And I was really hoping that this would be a s service feeling that didn't give me so much. <laughs> but um, I, I have been completely transformed by this experience and I am deeply grateful to them and I thank them every class for their trust. And I have a letter, I have a couple letters from my inmates that I wanted to read from my students. Can I do that? Yeah. Do we have Still a moment? Have a few minutes. Still have a few minutes? Okay. So this one's from Joe. He gave me permission to use his real name. What a true blessing yoga has become to me mentally, physically, and emotionally. Even though I'm incarcerated, I pride myself on being fair and willing to try new things. So when the opportunity to enroll in a prison yoga class arrived, it was intriguing and interesting. But deep down, I figured that I'd go once and be over it. But to my surprise, it was a soothing voice, a break from madness, and a human compassion that a place like this lacks constantly. For one whole hour, I left my prison, my cell, and gained peace, real peace, a calmness, a much needed break. And just like that, I was hooked. The poses were hard, but manageable. The breathing was invigorating and deep. It's really, truly amazing to gain this in a place that's designed to break you down and to destroy your spirit. And to my surprise, here comes a person eager to find peace once a week, ready to relieve stress in a new way. I'm truly thankful for Mandy and yoga. This class has given me a hope for a less stressful future, a way to channel the negative out, free and healthy. I look forward to every Wednesday now. I crave yoga like my body used to crave toxins. It's amazing how something so simple can feel so good. My weeks here seem more tolerable and I feel less likely to let stress get the better of my everyday incarceration. To my surprise, yoga is not just for women. It's not just for exercise and it's not just for free people. Yoga is great for me and my future. My name is Joseph Pish and I was totally surprised at how great yoga was and is for me. Wow. wow. <laughs> amazing, huh? Yeah. yeah. And uh, if I could, this is from Marty. There are many good things that come from the yoga class that Mandy teaches. It feels good to be talked to like a human being. 
Most people like a kind, soft, gentle voice when they are being spoken to, such as the way Mandy speaks to her pupils in her class. I enjoy the exercise and the sense of freedom I receive in the yoga class. I am the one that subjected myself to this place of confinement. I do not blame others for what I have done. All I ask for is to be treated with respect from my fellow humans, whether it be the guards or the inmates. The biggest mistake is not using the brain God gave me the proper way. I do not wish this lifestyle for anyone. I live in a bathroom with another man, and that in itself is cruel. People must be punished for their wrongs, but I think there should be a limit. Being cold, hungry, and afraid is never a good thing. The worst is being alone. Things need to change here in America. We need to look at other countries, such as the Netherlands and Portugal. Their laws are much better than ours. Their prisons and jails are pretty much empty. Prison and jails are big business in this country. Prisons are on the stock market in this country. We're the only country in the world that has the most incarcerated men and women. Change must come change from within. Thank you for your time in this matter. Sincerely, Martin Grushin. So, another surprise with beautiful, meticulous handwriting. This is beautiful handwriting. They, um, they are thoughtful. They are intelligent. They are compassionate. They take complete and 100% responsibility for what they did. They, um, I guess I'll just end by saying, sometimes I look at it and I say, what is the difference between a jail and an ashram? Because here's a human, you've taken away all his possessions. In many cases, they've shaved their heads. You give them clothes that are not theirs. <coughs> you give them no jobs. They have nothing to do all day. And it is, all they do is think. All they do is think about time. And they, they think about doing time, serving time. They know the criminal justice systems, the judges, the plea bargains, the nolo contendere. They know the lawyers. They know the defendants. They know the system. They know good time, getting good time credits. They know who got in, who got out, who got, who got to go to mental health. And they are shooting these arrows across my classroom before it begins as though those arrows are gonna land on a key that's gonna unlock their cell. And I just sit there on my mat, huddled in my privilege, because I learned a lot of languages, Spanish, four quarters of Italian. Uh, I didn't learn this language of the, of the system. And So they, more often than they realize, teach me. And I truly am grateful because if, if the gold in this life is money, this is a real loser experience. This is, this is not working out. But if the gold in this life is to have your heart cracked open and, and wisdom transmitted and your assumptions challenged and uh, a feeling of traveling and growing and learning and becoming humble and walking with other people towards a state of bliss, then I seriously hit the jackpot. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I really did. And they know it, and uh, and I know it too. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah. Yeah. So Maria, mm. can I ask you a question? Of course, Maria. Mm -hmm. You ask them, what can I share with this group of people? And they said, share that we need help. Yes. Talk about what help do they need. Yeah. What's real about that? What could, what could we do? That's an awesome question. And a woman named Amber, she got out this morning. Um, she wanted me to say that when, when they get out, the first couple of, especially the first couple Shame of months are very out of Richmond for a second, because they have gone into this jail and many others, and they have taken over an entire pod of 50 men and turned it into a rehabilitation and addiction counseling treatment center. And they are getting, I think, 12 hours a day of group counseling, addiction counseling, job training, 
um, emotional intelligence. They're so funny. They just started all this. They're very excited about it. But they say, you know, we got to wake up and go into a group and talk about our feelings. <laughs> and I'm like, how is that? I'm like, so hard, so hard. I have, I have three veterans in my class. And so they're male and veterans. You know, stiff upper lip, don't feel anything. So they're having to melt through all that and that's really helping. So that kind of support. So they need a place to live. They'd like some job training. They'd like some help with their resumes. They'd like some help um, getting to employers. They'd like the employers to be educated on how to help them as well. It's a lot to ask, but um, they also need, there's a beautiful place called the Guest House in Alexandria, and I toured it and I talked to the people there about the kind of support, because I said, I want to put one of these in every community. Um, and I believe they have about 30 women only there, but they need mental health counseling, they need financial counseling, they need lawyers, they need help with um, managing their probation. Uh, they need job training. Sometimes they need education, GED help. They need addiction counseling. So that's what they said. I said, can we replicate this in Front Royal tomorrow? And they said, well, we're looking at places that have the supports already because each one of these women needs a lot of support. Um, so the women go from jail to the guest house? Yes. It doesn't have to be bed to bed, mm -hmm. but it's recommended that it's bed to bed, mm -hmm. precisely because those first that first month is a is a time when they can really slip. Yeah. And if for some of these women, if their um, if their addiction is heroin or opiates, if they slip, they can overdose. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. so it's critical. It's it's a critical time. But Amber's going to her grandma's, but she's worried. She's worried that there's not going to be. Um, the supports there that she needs. So I put her in touch with the guest house and got the application before she left and she has that in her papers when she goes and uh, now we'll see. And even the guest house has its, you know, it's a challenging population. Mm -hmm. But one thing I love is to see anyone who looks at an impossible situation and rolls up their sleeves and walks straight towards it. You know? And certainly we have people that I know for sure in this room do exactly that. And I'm wondering if maybe we can use the um, woman gathering post to add any other information or if people have any questions, they could certainly post on the event page or the live, the live video mm -hmm. and um, ask Miranda questions and oh, absolutely. if you put some links up there, yeah. you could feel free to do that. Okay, yeah, no, absolutely. Too. I'd be happy to. Okay. Because I think we need to end the live part, but mm -hmm. we can still hang around a little bit sure. and after, okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just, um, I'd like to repeat that Rumi quote, out beyond right doing and wrong doing, there is a field, I'll meet you there. And that yoga class is the field. And it has to do with creating an environment where there's no competition, there's no comparison, there's no expectation, there is no thought control. Students don't have to believe a word I say. They don't have to do a thing I say. There is just this radical acceptance and this acknowledgement that just as human beings, we are connected and um, we do belong to one another. And the sense that it's not just there, but for the grace of God go I, but it's there go I. And as long as we are putting traumatized people in cages, we're all in a cage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any um, announcements to make for the Center <sighs> Center, or shall we just? I have a question. It's yes. really hard to Hi, follow up. Yes, okay. We're right all now. completely yeah. blown away. It's, yeah, we're <laughs> all completely blown away. I will say that we're going to end our Dare to Dream. The application last day is tomorrow. Um, and I, you know, and what the Dare to Dream is about is we give grants to women in the community to further their dreams. Um, and this is, Miranda has a huge dream. Um, and I hope that we can help in any way, shape, or form. I, I think I speak to everyone in this room. You could have heard a pin drop. 
I, we were completely and utterly moved. Thank you. Thank you, Echo, for bringing Miranda. Thank My you goodness, Miranda. for sharing this. This is thank you for really incredible. You thank, well, you. thank you. And I think that's... And thank you to Beth Waller for yes, giving Beth. us this lovely space. And yes. thank you very much to our videographer, Jen, Jen Avery. Avery. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for and everyone for coming and, and thank joining you all in for on coming. this nasty winter day. But and we're here. here. And whoever's watching. Yes. So until yes. we meet again. Yeah. Thank you.